Happy Wednesday to you, and uh, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, thank you for joining in. I hope you're joining in on Wednesday. You may be checking it out later, which that's perfectly okay as well. Uh, but it's so good to see you, and thank you for for being a part and logging on. Uh, apologize to you for internet issues and things that we've been having. You can go to YouTube. Uh, we had some problems with the uh, Facebook uploads, but you can go to the YouTube channel for us and uh, that's Temple Baptist uh, Moss Point. Look that up and then you will find that and uh, then you can find the different things there as well if you can't find it on Facebook Live. Uh, but those that are joining, we, uh, we're so glad that you're with us. Um, let me just remind you of a few things. Uh, the Women's Bible Study it takes place on Tuesday nights from 6 to 7. My wife, Selena, is leading that at our home. We'd love for you ladies to be a part. And then on Sunday mornings from 7.15 to 8.15 in the morning, uh, I'm leading a men's group here at the church, and uh, we'd love for all our guys to come and be a part of that. And then Celebrate Recovery is from 5 to 7 on Sunday afternoons. Then we have all of our Wednesday night things in place with our children. Uh, we have like a Mission Friends group, which is the younger group, threes and fours that Selena's leading, and then uh, um, our kiddos from kindergarten up to uh, uh, sixth grade is uh, having a great time um, from five to six in the sanctuary, and then Patrick and Amber are meeting with our youth. Youth can come as early as 3.30. They do homework, play games, have snacks, all of that, and then their Bible study worship starts at five as well, and we're done by six on Wednesdays kind of helps our families and some things that they have going on. And so uh, our schedule's working out great. We want to encourage you to be a part of that. Um, Bible study groups, Sunday school groups, starting at 945 on Sunday mornings. We want to encourage you to be on time for that because we're running from 945 to 1030. And, uh, and then we're in for worship starting at 1045. So uh, a lot of things happening, and we want you to be a part of it. Uh, we want you to be involved, um, and uh, we need folks to help us in Vacation Bible School coming up uh, in June, June 7 through 11. Um, that's a big thing for us. It's going to be daytime this year, which involves a lot more people, so we need people, and so we ask you to come and be a part of that, um, and, uh, and we need help in children's ministry with uh, kids care and kids worship. And uh, I need you to volunteer. I need you to step up and help in those areas. Um, just some uh, monetary needs. Let me just thank you for those who are giving, but uh, also for those who um, just need uh, uh, encouragement. I want you to just be faithful in the area of giving. You can give online uh, at the website, templebaptistmosspoint.com. And... Uh, you can look at that, and you can find it there, and then um, look for the give icon, and you'll be good to go. Or you can uh, text the word give to 84321, give through that means, or you can go to the church center app. So uh, we, we, we need you to do that. And then also we're going to be put, having to put a new roof on the, the building, church building, and we're getting estimates now, so we want to encourage you to think about your part. Uh, maybe in helping out in regards to that. And uh, let me encourage you to give feedback. When you're watching online, a lot of you are watching online on Sunday. Uh, some of you gave feedback from this past Sunday, and I really appreciate that. I read your feedback. I, I try to respond to you if I can, um, and if I uh, don't miss it, and I try not to miss it. So um, if, you know, if you don't get a response, message back. But uh, I want you to get a response from us. We need your prayer requests. Um, update information you can send that to us uh, but we want you to be a part and if you have any questions you can call the church office um, go to the website uh, message us whatever you need to do we will get back to you I promise you that uh, but we, we want you to be involved we want to connect with you as best we can uh, whether it's adults children youth um, we'll, we'll, we want to be there for you so um, just want to encourage you in that way all right let me just ask you to be in prayer. Um, um, I know that Miss Joyce McKinley has not been feeling well, and uh, some things going on with her. Miss Francis Hill as well. Um, I want you to continue to pray for George Smith. George has um, made a major improvement, but he's had some issues this week. 
uh, with infection and kidneys and things like that. So I ask you to be praying for him. Be praying for Geraldine. Uh, also for Brian Neal, Brian and Mary Beth. Uh, Brian and Mary Beth live in Laurel. Brian's from Monticello. Um, but uh, Brian's battling cancer. And uh, just ask you to be uh, uh, praying for him. And uh, so um, I know there's others that, that you're praying for. And God's working. God's moving. Um, and so um, just keep that up. Let us know if we can join in with you in prayer. We'd love to do that and walk along beside you um, and then uh, just to, to do life with you. That's our life goal is to do life with you, uh, to be a part of your life, and you be a part of our lives, and uh, let's just minister together, okay? Um, let me pray, and uh, we're going to kind of jump right in. Uh, I want to talk to you about expectations, uh, keeping those expectations high, uh, really standards, if you will. Um, uh, think about what God wants tonight and keep those expectations high. Let's go to the Lord. Father, tonight we come before you. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings and, God, your love and your grace and your mercy and, God, your divine presence. Lord, I pray that you'd work with us tonight, be with us tonight, guard and guide us, Lord. Bless our time of Bible study. Um, God, just thank you for uh, just the energy. God, that, that uh, we're seeing, and Lord, I pray for a movement of God. Thank you for salvations. Thank you for folks that uh, are desiring to join the fellowship of God's church. And so, Lord, uh, remind us that it's your church, it's not ours. And God, you want us to fulfill our part and our giftedness, Lord, to serve you and honor you, and we've got all kind of ways that can be done. So God, bless our time tonight. Draw us close, and God, may you get all the victory in Christ's name. Amen. Uh, I want you to think with me. We're going to be in Jeremiah. I'm just going to do a, uh, I'm going to give you one verse in Jeremiah 33. Uh, if you want to mark or make note of that. And then I'm going to give you a couple other verses tonight. I want to talk to you. Um, you know, last week we talked about the benefits of just serving and loving Jesus, what God does for us, uh, you know, and how God steps in our life with wisdom and understanding. Um, I think you can get that on YouTube. Um, and, uh, but take a look at that if you haven't already. I, I know it didn't come up like it was supposed to. Um, but, you know, just thinking about the benefits, thinking about what God really wants to do in our life. And we don't know what to say, how God steps in and the Holy Spirit guides us. Um, you know, just the presence of God, the, the, just how God works in our lives. And tonight I kind of want to want to continue thoughts in that way, but expectations uh i want you to think about your expectations your standards um we're doing uh, men's bible study as kingdom man by tony evans and uh and i used an illustration on sunday that tony used uh, from the standpoint of a basketball goal you know a basketball goal is supposed to be set at 10 feet well you walk in the gym you see that 10 foot goal and you see all the professional players and high school players and college players and all that and they're dunking that ball at 10 feet well, you may have a youngster or you know, you may have an old guy like me can't dunk it at 10 feet. And so what do we do? If we can lower the goal, the basketball goals we have in our, our, our driveways and all of that, they're, low, they're adjustable, so we're able to lower them. And so we'll lower that goal down to eight foot goal or nine foot goal or whatever so you can dunk it, you know. And uh, even with little boys, we'll bring it on down. We'll hold our little boys up and they'll take the basketball and jump it drop it through, and it's a big deal just to get it in the hoop in that manner. Well, the analogy is that that's the way we do life. God's goal is set up there like 10 foot, and we want to lower it to 8 foot so we can slam dunk it and we justify and rationalize what we want to do. And so, um, you know, I, I want you to think in terms of that. God's standard never changes. We change his standard. We try to make it fit for us. But the standard of God never changes. And I want you to think on the terms of how great God is. How great is our God? And uh, God's waiting on us to come to him, to follow him, to listen to him. And that's really what I want you to get from tonight. And I want to use a verse in uh, Jeremiah. As God told uh, the prophet, uh, you know, he was promising restoration to the nation uh, dealing with the Davidic kingdom and just all of that kind of stuff. And here's what God says in Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Um, he says, Call to me, 
and I will answer you. I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. Call to me, and I will tell you great and mighty things. I will answer you. I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. Uh, that's, that's the key right there, uh, that we plug into God and let the wisdom of God, the understanding of God, uh, just come into our life. I'm telling you, we serve an amazing God. Now, you think about your life. I, I, I think I'm thinking about my life. You know your life, and I know my life, but I just think about the things that I've done, the things that have separated me from God's love, from God's, or, or from God's presence, from God's salvation. God always loves us. It uh, doesn't really separate us from God's love. Uh, God loved us. The Bible says that God demonstrated his love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so uh, we're not separated from God's love. We separate ourselves from his blessing. Uh, we separate ourselves from his salvation. Uh, from the standpoint when we reject him, uh, but when we surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever that would believe in him would not perish, but they would have everlasting life. That's salvation. When we place our faith and trust in him, the Bible says that all of sin that comes short of the glory of God, and, and the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And uh, the Bible says if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe that God raised him from the dead, then you and I will be saved. And so anyway, when you think about that, when we reject that, then, you know, we're rejecting God. But I want to talk to you about those expectations. I want to talk to you from the standpoint of uh, God just letting us in on things we don't know, uh, the very wisdom of God, things that we were talking about last week, things that... You know, we don't know what to say. God steps in. The Holy Spirit steps in. And that's what he was telling Jeremiah. He said, look, call to me. I'm going to answer you. I'm going to let you in on the, the things that I know that you don't know. And, and what better way to do that? I mean, you know, think about the prayers that you pray. I had a conversation in recent weeks with someone, and they were talking about how their kids praying. And, and uh, one person even told me recently that uh, their um, daughter was talking in her sleep, and she was praying in her sleep, um, which is pretty awesome in itself. But uh, I want you to think about the prayers that you pray. Do you pray the same kind of prayer that you prayed when you became a believer? Um, what kind of foundation is under your prayers? What kind of expectations are under your prayers? Uh, do you pray with certainty? Or do you ask God for something, and, and in the back of your mind you're saying, well, I don't think God answered that. Um, I, I, don't, I don't expect God to answer that. Um, do you pray with, with boldness, expecting God to move? Um, tonight, I want you to realize God loves you. God wants to answer your prayer. I think we need to pray big prayers. I think we need to pray bold prayers. God wants to bless us. And, and I think one of the mistakes we make, um, most of the time we're trying to do life in our own strength so we don't get outside of what we can control and what we can do. Um, and the truth is, in many times, we lower our expectations and we justify and rationalize things in our own life. And, and, and when life gets tough, I mean, we just kind of bring our expectations down. Um, and so, um, and, and, and the results of that is we settle for less than what God really wants, God's best for our life. God wants his best for us. And so many times we battle between what's good and best. Hardly ever battle what's bad and good. It's always between what's good and best. And so many times we're guilty of lowering that standard. And so um, I want you to, to be challenged tonight to keep the high standard of God. Keep it there and watch what God will do. And then set examples for others to follow. Set the examples for those who come behind us, for all those who come behind us. They may follow the Lord Jesus Christ. That you can tell them, you know, do as I do as I follow Christ. Keep your eyes on the will of God and watch what he does. Um, I mean, we're to point others to Jesus Christ, and our lifestyle are to point others to Jesus Christ. If there's anything, believer, in your life that's not pointing others to Jesus Christ, uh, but you, you need to get rid of it. You need to get, get, get it out of your life. And so, uh, you know, the high expectations, the, the high goals, we ought to have high goals. Uh, be bold in our goals. Um, you know, I'm praying that God's going to provide on this roof that we got to do here at the church. Uh, not taking that lightly. I believe God will, and uh, but we need to be strong in our prayers. Uh, been praying for a long time that God uh, just expand our territory. Uh, 
you know, and, and, and he has. And, and one thing about the pandemic is it forced us to expand our ter territory and the things we do. And, and so, uh, you know, set goals that only God can reach. If God don't reach them, then they're failures as far as we're concerned, which uh, God doesn't consider us a failure. God just, uh, in our own eyes, we may consider it a failure. But God, well, I want you to set goals that you say, God, if you don't come through, I'm sunk. I, I'm a sunk ship. Um, you know, uh, in, you remember in Genesis 18, go back there and look if you get a chance, Abraham and Sarah. And uh, they were both up in age. Uh, you know, uh, she, the Bible says she was past childbearing. When the baby was born, when I was born, Abraham was 100. So, I mean, they were on up there bumping 100. And, uh, you know, and the Bible says in verse 14, is anything too difficult for God? Is anything too hard for, for God? And the answer is no. Uh, I mean, it's easy to, you know, sometimes you'll hear us say, well, uh, all things are possible with God. They are. But do we believe it? Uh, we'll say nothing is too hard for God. Truth. But do we believe it? Uh, do we have faith in that? Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's the fact that, uh, you know, what we do next. When we pray that prayer, we make that statement. It's what we do next that makes all the difference in the world. Um, and uh, how do we believe? Uh, do we actually believe God's going to provide? Um, you know, there's people in my life, I, I look back at their faith aspect. Uh, George is one of them uh, over in Africa. Uh, but there's some pastors over there, Tobias, an African pastor over there, and I watch them, and I see their faith. Um, it's amazing to watch that and watch God, how he moves in their life. And uh, so think about that. Um, the, uh, in John 13, 17, John, uh, Jesus makes this statement. If you know uh, these things, uh, blessed are you that do them. So when we know something's right by God, then we, we, we know that if we do them, then the blessings are going to come according to the word of God. And God does not lie. God is faithful to his word. And so, you know, um, at the same time, the Bible says if you know to do these things and you don't do them, then that's sin, right? Uh, but if you do do them and, and, and you do what God wants you to do, then God blesses in that. And that's where I want to go with that for the next few moments. And we, we won't be long. Uh, just stay with us. I want to give you really three things that I want you to think about, three thoughts in regards to keeping the standards high, keeping the expectations up, watching what God does. If you know to do these things, you do them, the blessings will come. The first thing, to have the blessings of God, um, we got to do what he says. We, we must do what he says. We're talking about the Lordship of Christ. Uh, in the kingdom men and uh, you know and, and Tony Evans says you're not a kingdom man if you're not doing what God wants you to do I mean that's pretty basic uh, it's pretty down to earth everybody can get it you're not a kingdom woman unless you're doing what God wants you to do you're not a kingdom youth if you're not, unless you're doing what God wants you to do you're not a kingdom pastor if you're not doing what God wants you to do and, and so I mean basically that's defined by disobedience and God doesn't bless uh, disobedience we do what God says and uh you know, when God uh, leads us, you know, there's things in God's Word that's written down that are commands. Uh, you don't even have to pray about those because as a believer, He's already told us to do them. We're to be witnesses. We learned on Sunday through Bible study, Brad and Patrick and them, to, uh, to, in, in the Great Commission, to make disciples, to baptize them, to teach them, uh, to observe all things that God has put before us. Uh, how are you going to teach them? Uh, you know, tell them and, and live it before them. Let them see Jesus in you. Um, and so, uh, you know, when you think of, uh, uh, about life, I mean, be careful not to get attached to a method or take ownership. Uh, let God move. Uh, life changes. And it bothers me when people take ownership. Uh, we got to be willing to do whatever God leads us to do. Um, you know, so when you, when you think about what, what God says, when you want the blessings of God or you desire the blessings of God, then you got to be obedient in doing what God says. And so, uh, you know, sometimes tests come our way and people are wondering, why, why in the world am I going through this? Well, it's to show us where we really are. And it might very well be an area of disobedience or an area of weakness. Uh, so you think about that. Uh, show us where we are in our walk with him. It's not to show God where we are. Uh, the test comes to, to work in our life. So, uh, you know, God will never bless our disobedience. If we can ever get that through our thick skulls, then God will do some 
some amazing things. Uh, when we refuse to do what God says, that's disobedience. It's sin, and God's not going to bless it. So, uh, um, you know, when we always look to God to stay in the familiar, um, you know, God, God wants to stretch us. God wants us to step out in faith, to do things that we've never done before. Um, to be truthful, God's not predictable. Um, you know, we take mission trips, and one of the things we tell them on mission trips is you got to be flexible. Uh, you, you can't go with a rigid thought. We may train you one way, but we may get there and have to make some changes. Uh, so, I mean, God is an unpredictable God. And uh, now he stays with his truth, uh, with his word, with his foundational principles. Those never change. But there's different things in our life that's going to change. And, uh, you know, when we think about our obedience to God, it needs to rise to the top. For the blessing of God to come, then you and I need to be obedient, right? We need to do what he says do when he says do it. Don't him haul around. Don't find excuses not to do it. Just say, yes, Lord, and watch what God does. And, uh, you know, you may, you may be like Moses when God told him to lead the children out of Egypt. He tried to find a way out of it. Uh, but God told him he could do it. You know, uh, he tried to find, to emphasize his weaknesses. God said, I'll overcome your weaknesses, all right? And that's what he'll do in our life. Our shortcomings, he'll overcome them. So the second thing is to walk in the blessings of God and have the blessings. Don't look back. Don't look back. Look forward and say, okay, God, I don't get it all, but I want to walk with you and walk by faith. I know that's easier said than done, but when we trust the Lord, watch what he's done. The best is yet to come. And the past is gone. There ain't nothing we can do uh, about yesterday. There's nothing you can do uh, about yesterday. And look forward to the future. Um, you know, Luke uh, chapter 9, verse 62, uh, Jesus says, The man who puts his hands to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. So I, I, I plead with you tonight to look forward, to pray forward, to pray bold prayers, to seek the will of God, to, uh, to do what he says. Don't, don't him haul around. I mean, uh, I told you on Sunday, I mean, the, one of our issues is people don't want to do nothing. Uh, you know, we can't find people to work today, sitting at home and, and not doing anything. Get up and do something. Find something to do for the Lord uh, and, uh, you know, and be what God wants you to be. Um, so, um, you know, I, you know, when you're thinking about looking back, think about what I just said a moment ago with Moses, when God chose him to lead the people, I mean, he started giving excuses, right? Looking back, well, I got this wrong and I don't speak well and I can't do this and I can't do that. And God still chose him and God moved. And, uh, you know, we, uh, it's not about our abilities. It's about our availability and God wants to move in the midst of our availability. And, uh, you know, don't look back. Uh, so, so many people, their past, they let their past hold them back. Man, if you've come to Christ, the Bible says you're a new creation. Uh, miss, if you've come to Christ, the Bible says you're a new creation. You're in Christ. And uh, don't worry about what happened before. Just serve the Lord in the midst of where you are. And watch what God will do. Um, John Ford's leading our Celebrate Recovery and his testimony. I mean, to hear what God's done in his life. Uh, is amazing to me and, and to hear that and and to just watch uh, other people like John and what how God's moved in their life. Don't look back. Look forward, okay, and seek God. Uh, seek his ways. Hold on. <laughs> God's got some big stuff in store, right? Uh, and so, uh, you know, you, you keep that standard high um, and, and keep a high expectation of God. Be bold in your prayers. Be bold in your actions. Be bold in everything about you, right? Uh, so, you know, to walk in the blessings of God, to have the blessings of God, you got to do what he says. Uh, you know, to walk in the blessings of God, don't look back. Look forward. Expect God to move. And the third thing is to walk in the blessings of God or to have the blessings of God, then you got to surrender every day. Surrender daily to him. Um, you know, the, the Bible says, take up your cross and follow me. Uh, what, your cross is surrender. My cross is surrender. Surrender to the Lord. Uh, you know, just watch what God wants to do. Die to self. Every one of us need to die to self every single day. Die to the flesh. Seek God. I mean, you have these thoughts and you wonder, where in the world do they come from? Uh, the flesh. Uh, those kinds of thoughts. Walk 
where God wants you to walk. Talk like God wants you to talk. Uh, be who God wants you to be. Read his word, study his word, pray. Uh, you know, talk to you about prayer a while ago. Go deeper in your prayers. Maybe you're still at that person where you sit down with your, or that place where you sit down with your kids. Now I lay me down to sleep. And, and, and that, in that little prayer, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Get beyond that. Start praying and, and watch what God do. Dig deep. Pray for somebody else. Um, you know, when you just sit down and do grace at the table, take time to pray over that meal. Uh, you know, and, and just seek the Lord. Watch what God will do. And die to self. Seek the Lord. Go and do what God wants you to do. And, and just say, Lord, uh, I am incapable. That's what we, God wants is for us to be, realize that we are incapable. We're insufficient. Um, we, you know, the, we taught on Sunday from the standpoint of uh, you and I can do nothing apart from Jesus Christ. He, uh, we're, the, uh, we're the branches, he's the vine, and we need to stay plugged in. Uh, you get caught off from the vine, you're going to die. Uh, if you're in the midst of disobedience, you're going to die. You're going to shrivel up, you're going to die. Uh, you're not going to be able to live. Um, you know, God will enable the one who, who stays connected, who surrenders, uh, and, and just says, Lord, I will. I don't understand it, God, but I'll go, I'll do, I'll speak, I'll be all that you want me to be. Don't lower the standard. Uh, be bold and, and keep the expectations high. Um, you know, here's the thing to realize, and I made this statement last week, maybe not in the same words. Um, God's not weaker as a result of our weaknesses, and God's not stronger as a result of our strengths. Uh, you know, we don't make God weaker, and we don't make him stronger. He's God. He's the one who created us. We're the cre uh, created. We're the creature, all right? He's the creator. And so, uh, you know, keep those expectations high. Keep those goals high. Pray. Seek the will of God. Um, here's the deal. God wants to do more in your life right now than he's done before and ever done before. And will you surrender to him? Will you allow God to do uh, what he wants to do? Uh, maybe he's leading you to give more than you ever give. Maybe he's wanting you to spend more time in his work than you've ever spent. Uh, maybe he wants you to read and study and do something different than you've ever done before. Um, maybe you need to go and, and just go to a person and say, I, I just need to share something with you. I don't know what it is, but I'm, I'm encouraging you tonight to, to let God be God and let him lead. Desire the Holy Spirit of God to do his greatest work. Let him have complete control. The Lord God, the one who's in control, the God who rules. That's what that means. If you go back and you look at that, Lord God, the God who's in power, the God who rules. Um, we're nothing apart from God, okay? So, so my encouragement to you tonight is to trust the Lord. Keep the standards high. Um, keep uh, expectations up there. And be bold in all that we do for the kingdom purpose. It's not for our will, it's not for our purpose, but it's for his will and his purpose. All right? I hope you finish the week well. Love to see you on Sunday. Love to have your feedback. Text me, call me, send it to the office, message us, whatever you need to do. But we're going to be looking for you Sunday. Uh, bring somebody with you to worship if you can come. If not, bring somebody to your house. Uh, have a get-together there. Feed them, whatever you want to do. Have a brunch. I don't care. Just get people together, and let's see what God's going to do, all right? Uh, we love you, and we care about you. Uh, don't forget that. Let's pray. God, thank you for tonight. God, I pray that we would raise the bar, that we keep the standards there. And God, we would ask you for your divine guidance and your divine will. God, that we stand amazed in the presence of our King. And Lord, I praise you today and tonight. And Lord, I pray your blessings in Christ's name. Amen. May God bless you. Hope to see you on Sunday. Good night.